The topic of this video is, when is squaring both sides of an inequality okay? Let's look at some examples. All right, so I have four inequalities drawn here on the board and every single one of them is true. Four is greater than or equal to three. That's true. One is greater than or equal to negative two. That's true. Negative five is less than or equal to three. That's true. Negative eight is less than or equal to negative six. That's true. So the question becomes, what happens if we square both sides? Now, traditionally, when working with inequalities, we remember the very familiar rule, if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, then you have to flip the direction of your inequality sign. But this is different. Squaring both sides is a different mathematical action. We don't have a rule that we've worked out for that. So let's see if we can maybe discover one. Let's begin by looking at this. Four is greater than or equal to three. If we square both sides, then on the left, we would have four squared, and on the right, we would have three squared. And what we're trying to investigate is what sort of inequality symbol should go in between there? Well, four squared is 16, three squared is nine. So it appears that in this particular instance, we would keep the inequality symbol, and 16 really is greater than or equal to nine. Okay, so this seems to suggest some evidence that if you square both sides, the sign should not change. Let's look over here. Same approach, one and negative two. We're gonna square both sides. So we'll square the one and we'll square the negative two, and then we'll see if we can figure out what sort of sign should go in between. Well, one squared is one, and negative two squared is positive four. And so, in this particular instance, we find that we would have to swap the sign so that we have a true statement because one is less than or equal to four. Hmm, so we now have two bits of information and they are seemingly contradictory. Okay, let's look at our next example. Negative five on the left and three on the right. All right, let's square both of these and then we can compare. Negative 5 squared would be positive 25, 3 squared would be 9, and that, once again, flip-flops our sign. Last example. All right, so negative 8, we're going to square that. Negative 6, we're going to square that. And then we have to figure out what sign is supposed to go in the middle. Well, negative 8 squared is 64, negative 6 squared is 36, and the sign would apparently, in this case, flip. Okay, so the question was, when is squaring both sides of an inequality okay? And perhaps uh, supporting that question or, or within that question uh, is the secondary question, if we do square both sides of an inequality, do we flip the sign or not? And here's what we observe. In this particular instance, if we keep the sign the same, then that would be okay. But here, if we keep the sign the same, that would be bad. And here, if we keep the sign the same, that would be bad. And here, if we keep the sign the same, that would be bad. So it seems like this is the good scenario, and these three are the bad scenarios. So what does this inequality statement have? What characteristic did it have that the other three inequalities don't? Or perhaps phrased another way, what do these three inequalities have that this one is missing? And to me, the answer is a negative. Notice that these three inequalities all have a negative, either on the right side, on the left side, or on both sides. But this one consists exclusively of two positive values. So this leads us to suspect that it may be true that as long as both sides of your inequality statement are positive values, then squaring both sides would preserve the sign of the inequality symbol. And although it is beyond the scope of college algebra for this to be proven, this is in fact true. So if you find yourself in a situation like this and you want to square both sides of an inequality, you just have to verify that both sides are positive.